everyone so I wanted to do a video on how to deal with a pregnant person so I thought I would bring in an expert um, since we are pregnant with baby number four we've definitely learned a lot of things uh, through each pregnancy and just for the sake of the video I'll play the crazy pregnant person <laughs> just for the sake yeah. of the video <laughs> because we all know I'm the most perfect pregnant she person. will be very convincing <laughs> Okay, so let's see. I, I, I guess we should start with saying like our very first daughter, our first baby, um, it was not, we, we've we learned a lot from it, huh? It was terrible. <laughs> very it was, difficult It was bad. Time. I think if there was ever a time where I would question if our marriage was going to make it, it was when I was pregnant with number one. Mm -hmm. um, so... I, I feel like that's like the biggest decision on us having more kids. It wasn't really having the actual kid. It was like me being pregnant again. So, um, yeah, the first kid was <laughs> very, very difficult. Very difficult. I was uh, young. We had only been married about a year and together a couple of years. We were really excited about the baby at first. But man, things got <laughs> difficult. She got pretty moody. Yeah. And I didn't have all my priorities straight. I'd be gone and, uh, working real hard and miss out on a lot of stuff with her and it really hurt her feelings a lot and uh, I realized pretty quick I gotta be a lot less selfish it grows you up a lot faster fellas and one thing I feel like it's it was harder for us is that I just physically don't do well with pregnancy too huh yeah I think that made it day, like way harder morning. yeah it was all day about every day yeah. since about the day that that uh, Egg got fertilized. Egg got fertilized. Yeah. <laughs> From yeah, literally, like the moment the egg got fertilized, I started throwing up, and I was like sick ever since then. So, not just that, just lots of other symptoms. I feel like I got like every symptom that you're supposed to get when you're pregnant. So, anyways, we thought we would share kind of for maybe like the significant other of the pregnant person, or maybe you're just around people because even just like people in general public say a lot of dumb things <laughs> to yeah. pregnant people mm -hmm. so we thought maybe we would share maybe some tips for you husbands or significant others or family members get your hard hat <laughs> get your hard hat get ready and you're in for it and get your passport picture get your passport <laughs> make sure you got thick skin yeah well okay so i wrote down a couple of things and he'll probably like add more things to it um and I have to admit that I knew when I was being crazy and moody, but just like when a girl is like on her period, all of her emotions feel legit, even though they're totally out of control. Out of, out of control. control. It's like you can't control it. So I would say for the woman, if you're the pregnant woman, um, acknowledge that you're crazy you know and I think that a lot of times you know even like I don't know I feel like a lot of women think oh because I'm pretty be, sorry I feel like a lot of women think because they're pregnant they have a free-for-all to just do whatever they want they should be treated like a princess and everything is okay you know excusable but I I think you still need to be responsible for your actions so yeah. that's one thing that I've learned because I, the first pregnancy I was just crazy and I just crazy so was, you, you gotta be careful what you say <laughs> don't react don't, don't say react. anything that could be written down and look really bad you're gonna want <laughs> to say things you back speak. Think but just you speak. <laughs> don't even don't even try and put yourself in their place it's so far removed from who you are I don't think there's any equivalent to a woman being pregnant that a man no. can understand, especially if she's sick every day yeah. and her back hurts and her emotions are going crazy. Just <laughs> say, you know what, she's going to say what she says. I love her. Uh, be quick to apologize. We're, we're not even there yet. We're at, I, I haven't even got there. I don't know what else okay, there we'll is. Okay, we'll skip to <laughs> sensitive. I feel like the woman is hypersensitive, but I think also the man needs to be sensitive to the woman. Um, and that probably goes with like not saying what you want to say that's in your mind because it's just going to make the circumstance worse. You're just yeah. going to, you know, and I think that you have to remind yourself that she is extra, extra sensitive. So whatever you say is going to be used against you. So yeah. you should probably be sensitive. 
Um, okay, number one, I said attentive. Be really attentive because that goes along with the girl being really sensitive. I think that, um, you know, you might normally not be used to doing a lot of little things and noticing stuff. Um, but once she's pregnant, like, she wants you to notice all those things. And especially if you're someone who gets sick a lot, like, I get sick a lot. I mean, it's tiring for the guy to hear all the time that they don't feel good. Like, I, I don't feel good every day, and he knows that. Right. And so I try not to, as much as I can, let him know, because he knows I don't feel good. Right. But at the same time, when I tell him, like, I'm not feeling good or whatever, like, if you're a guy, don't roll your eyes or don't ignore her or act like, oh, well, whatever, because she feels like crap. Fellas, she's right. We got to be more understanding and listen and try to be aggressive. Say, hey, I know you don't feel good. What can I do for you? Yeah. I, I know Taking you don't initiative. feel good. Yeah, yeah, but let me get you some water. Mm -hmm. Try and find some things that you know are going to make her feel better and be thoughtful to give it to her. Uh, get, get up a little bit early. Let her sleep in. Do, do a few extra of the chores and come at her saying, I want to wash the dishes and take out the garbage. I know you're not feeling good. Yeah. That way, if you acknowledge it first, you don't have to hear about it the whole, whole time. Which you're going to hear about it the whole time anyways. <laughs> yeah. But Probably. I do, yeah, I do think being attentive and taking initiative. And I, I think even like being involved. I mean, I, I personally don't l want him like sitting there watching me throw up. But I want him to acknowledge that I'm throwing up and like, you know, maybe afterwards like rub my back or get me something to drink or, you know, acknowledge that I wasn't feeling well. I don't know. Yeah, you can't fix all the problems. I know we want to fix the problem, but there is no fixing this problem until that baby comes out. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to kind of cope with it. Hang in there. Do your best. And, and bite uh, your tongue. You bite your tongue and just know it will end. <laughs> it will get better. I'm so thankful for the kids I have now. And once we had the first one, getting to be a dad, getting to hold that child, man, it changes your life. You get more love in your heart. And so when we were pregnant with the second one and the third one, now the fourth one, I got that hope that there's light at the end of the tunnel, that eventually this baby comes out, her hormones kind of stabilize a little bit, and she's going to feel better and everything's going to get better. Yep. So hold on to hope. <laughs> and I think it's good to be thoughtful. I think when guys are thoughtful when you're pregnant, half the time the girl doesn't act like she appreciates it or notice it or cares about it, but it does mean something. Like he's very thoughtful, like he'll come home, like he got when I got me a boba today or he'll just do like thoughtful little things. Um, you know, like since we do have three other kids, he gives me time by myself to like do whatever I want to do. Um, and okay, so I think the other thing too is I think a lot of times women feel totally justified in being a mean beast to their husband so they won't apologize for it even though they know they're totally wrong. Yeah. So I feel like that's one thing that I've worked on a lot like each pregnancy is after I've acted a beast I try to acknowledge and apologize for acting that way yeah. because it's not fair to him you know he doesn't physically feel sick but he still has to go every, through everything with me and I think that a lot of times people don't apologize and that's really wearing on a guy. It's like yeah. 10 months of a naggy, moody, beastly woman, yeah. you know, and if she doesn't ever apologize for being mean or being out of line, like that's wearing on the guy. So I would say for the girl to, after your mood swing has swung, yeah. <laughs> to apologize. Yeah. I think that's a huge thing. You, you, you're still and always accountable for your words. Yeah. When somebody offends you or the other person does something you don't like or they snip at you, I think you got one or two choices. You got to just forgive them there and let it go and don't bring it up again or very carefully, tactfully acknowledge it to them and say, hey, I didn't like when you said this. I think you were out of line. I think you were being disrespectful. But what you cannot do is you cannot load up that gun. You can't let two or three days of little offenses come by and then you know when they go over the line you're just going to rifle them off. Well you said this, you said that, you did this, you didn't do that. And all these little things mount up because in all the hours that you waited to say that you were just thinking nothing but negative about the other person. Yeah. So if you take time to get it out when it happens or better yet just forgive them. Understand it's not going to be this way forever. Understand they're going through it. They feel worse. and. What's the solution to the problem? 
is they want to be loved, they want to be supported, they want you there. And so if you pick them up a magazine, you pick them up a boba, you pick them up a coffee, those little things, it's not the little thing in itself, it's just that you're thinking about them that way. Yeah. It acknowledges what they're going through a little better, maybe. Yeah, and I think that as the pregnant person, like, you, you feeling annoyed and stuff like that, and them doing those sweet things, kind of reminds you that you do love them, yeah. like, and you don't want to hurt them or hurt their feelings. I think another thing for the guy, too, is, okay, the woman's body is going to change, and she's going to get huge, and she knows it, and she's not used to seeing her body that way, and I feel like one of the big mistakes we see a lot is we'll hear guys saying stuff to their wives, and we're like, oh, no, don't say that. Don't say that. No it, matter what you think, even if one day you're, you wake up and your wife is twice the size she was when she went to bed, <laughs> like, don't be like, dang, or like, Tell her she needs to exercise or tell her she needs to watch what she eats. Right. You, that's like, a, to me, that's like an off-limit zone when a woman's pregnant. Definitely say um, talking about the woman's body in any sort, even if you're trying to be encouraging and nice about it, because yeah. I feel like a lot of husbands do that. They'll be like, oh, well, honey, like maybe instead of getting ice cream, we should go for a walk or yeah. something. You're going to hurt her feelings. Yeah. And she already knows she's huge. So... I would just say anything to do with body weight, unless it's positive, like don't say it. Like he's been good every pregnancy and every postpartum time frame. He has always, I I I try to believe that everything he says is true. Yes, you would. But I, I feel like he it, he has he's very wise in that he doesn't ever say anything negative. Oh, she's a beautiful lady. But, I'm a very lucky man. <laughs> Like while I'm pregnant and after I have the baby you feel really bad about your body and you don't want someone who you love who you want to be attracted to you telling you that you need to lose weight or like or that your body looks different or that you looked better before or whatever because you already feel those things so for the guy I, like he's so good at this every day he makes sure that I feel beautiful well fellas you, you don't want other people complimenting your wife before you do you got to make sure that yeah. she feels loved and supported you know I embrace it when she gets pregnant man I get pregnant <laughs> yeah. I we, gain a few pounds on you. <laughs> I say you know if you're gonna get bigger uh, because of the child, I might just get bigger just to hang out with you. Yeah. So if she's going to eat something late, I'm going to eat something late. We can lose the, the weight together if we want. Yeah. But we won't always be looking like this. Someday we'll be full of, well, I'll be full of wrinkles. She probably will with all, <laughs> the, all the wonderful stuff. And anyway, it's not going to last forever. Beauty in the heart and beauty that you love the person, the more love you give them, the more beautiful they look. Yeah. But I, this one, guys, I, gotta, I, I don't identify with everybody. I got the prettiest lady. You, you might have the second prettiest, but I don't know. So good luck to you on that one. Well, I think a big thing too is like if other people make comments about your woman, that you stick up for them and be yeah, like, right I think away. she looks beautiful. Because I remember, when was it? I think it was with our first daughter. Like my dad made a comment about like me being fat and that I needed to lose weight. And he like right away was like, I think she looks perfect. Yeah. I don't think she needs to lose weight. And that like... I mean, when my dad said it, my eyes like welled up with tears and I was like so hurt. But the fact that he jumped in and was like, she's perfect the way she is, like totally made me feel. Yeah, protective. Good. Yeah, you, you want protected. to protect her, especially after when the baby comes, man, those, uh, those nurses sometimes are like Nazis about to breastfeed. I, I remember oh, yeah. we, were, we got kind of hurt about it. And I just keep telling listen, you don't have to do it. It's up to you. It's none of their business. And uh, so some of these shots and some of these tests that are uncomfortable and... I think some of it's nonsense, but I just try and tell her, hey, do what you want. They work for you. You don't work for them. Yeah. you got to stand up for it. And if they feel like they're getting pressed in a corner, or they feel like they're insulted, uh, guys, it's our role to stand up for them and support them and maybe yeah. just voice an opinion. St t tell the doctor, the nurse something kindly, politely, but if need be, a little more forcefully and say, hey, back off a little bit. She's been through a lot. Yeah. I definitely think, like, pregnancy and then, like, birth and like right after birth I feel like as a woman because I'm pretty independent but I do feel like in those times I feel like way more vulnerable and not weak but like I guess a little bit weak so you do want someone who's going to protect you and be there for make them. you feel safe and I don't know protected but yeah. I feel like we're like rambling about other stuff Anything uh, else about pregnancy? <laughs> uh, one of the things I, I, I found How do you deal with me as a crazy pregnant person? I would say try, try and get them involved in things. 
Right. Ask them questions about your job that, you know, when they're pregnant, sometimes they feel isolated. They might feel alone. They feel like they're dealing with stuff that people don't understand. If you can ask them questions that apply to your day-to-day, -day, that you're interested, that you're passionate about, it gets the subject off of them feeling bad. And they got a different perspective that can really help out. If you got some projects they could help you on, ask them to help you with them. If you can go some places that they like going, take the kids to the park or go for a walk, just really try and include them. In our first pregnancy, I, I remember kind of separating myself when we would get frustrated at each other or I'd get mad or she'd get mad. I'd just try and get some space. And honestly, space doesn't heal much. Space no. often makes us more bitter, thinking, oh, I just need some time. Well, five minutes is time, ten minutes is time, but after that, you're probably letting those wounds fester. Yeah. So if you keep short accounts and you keep each other involved and saying things like, hey, we're on the same team. I'm here with you. I'm not against you. I'm not going to argue with you. And then don't try and explain yourself. Just ask them. Hey, I'm going to listen again. Give them a hug. Can I give you a hug? Just let them know that you're there for them instead of uh, trying to win an argument. Because, friend, you ain't going to win an argument with a pregnant yeah. lady. And I think <laughs> you that's... You win, you lose. Like, most, most men probably wouldn't want to hug a crazy lashing out pregnant person but that's really what she needs like even though she might not act like it she really just needs a hug right. and and i think also like bringing people around that are enjoyable because when you're pregnant like i feel like everyone gets super annoying like i get so annoyed with people that certain people i just can't deal with them yeah try and keep and positive so, people around like i feel like he's my bodyguard he like if there's an annoying person coming at me he detours me <laughs> i try you gotta see you gotta be perspective you, you gotta see ahead of the game a little bit fellas this is what we're gonna do we're not gonna name call we're not gonna yell we're not gonna fight in front of our kids we'll talk about it we'll give each other time those things helped us some. I mean, it's, it's going to happen a little bit, but if you love the other person and you're committed to them, you know you're going to get through it. And you're going to love each other more in the end. Yep. So I should love her a lot. Child number four and, and no more. And, and we're getting fixed. <laughs> but I do think that w with a lot of marriages, like bringing kids into it kind of hurt their marriage or like made their marriage a lot harder. But I feel like we've learned so much more about each other and we're stronger and we love having kids like yeah, people are like why do you guys keep having kids we love having kids he's like the best dad oh, kind of i good. feel like our family is just like so much better i don't know i love it so i think in those moments when you things are getting crazy just remember that there's a good prize at the end and it's worth it and that you guys are on the same team that's right and that you love each other and you know, no matter what, the other person isn't going anywhere, I guess. That's right. So, I don't know. you have anything else you want to share? I'm very lucky that you're the uh, mother of my kids. I'm very thankful Aww. for it. Pray! Pray, <laughs> fellas! Oh, yeah, that should be you number one. You had better pray. <laughs> pray and hide. <laughs> yeah. And nothing else, nothing else you do really matters except for what you pass on to your kids. Yeah. They're all the world's going to know of you someday, so. Yeah. Invest in them well. And the best investment you can make in your kids it's about making it with your spouse. Yep. Give them the best spouse by you building up your spouse. Preach on, preach on. Preach on. All right. <laughs> All right now. All right. Well, that's it. So thank you guys for watching and from my special expert in the field. <laughs> just for one. Hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments or whatever, just let us know in the comments below. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.